Hey, what's up, everyone? So I posted a quote yesterday um, that got a lot of people talking about things, and I got a lot of private messages that were asking me, well, what does it mean? So I thought what I would do is I would just kind of give you my uh, idea as to why I posted it. And it comes from many masters. It comes from uh, Jesus' walk. It comes from Buddha's walk. It comes from all of them that have, that have actually walked this. And the quote that I did was, there are three states to awakening. The first one is that you wake up to yourself. Now, anybody that has actually um, been through this understood it instantly. For me personally, it was a mix between my reality cracking with the Mandela effect. Um, you know, I fell back on the Bible because that's what I knew, and the Mandela effect was affected by the Bible. You know, I, I've read the Bible so many times, and I have never seen the word the matrix in the Bible. It, it just fried my brain. And then when I saw the lion will lay down with the wolf, that hit something in me that just, it just did not make sense. Um, I am a Leo uh, in the church. It's a big thing about the lion, you know, the lion of Judah. And so I knew the quote was always a lion will lay down with a lamb or a lamb will lay down with a lion. And so when I saw a wolf, I thought, yeah, that, that's just really weird. So I couldn't even fall back on the things that I was comfortable with uh, to understand my own experience, right? The Mandela effect just fried my brain it just it cracked my reality in ways that I had to look for different research to, to try to understand and on this journey I studied the Anunnaki and I studied ghosts and I had studied energy and I studied science and I studied math and I I tried to understand these things um spirit science was a big one big shout out to spirit science it's a bunch of cartoons that explain a bunch of stuff that people have been trying to understand for many years um and then when I started to get a grasp on knowledge and I started to, to maybe understand that I was starting to wake up, not be awake yet, but wake up, uh, is when I personally had a near-death experience. Now, every, everybody's journey is completely different. Uh, for me personally, I got a hold of some CBD that is legal uh, that was laced with something that made it so that in my mind, whether it happened or didn't happen doesn't really matter. You know, the shack, the book, um, you know, rocked the core and the soul of people in the billion, I mean, in the millions. Uh, and we don't even know if it happened. You know, it, it, the point is, is that it happened to him. And for me, this happened to me because January 20th, 2016 was the day that I felt like I died. Everything in the world stopped for me. In this moment that I had done this stuff, I knew that something was completely different. Light was shining through the windows, but time stopped and if you've ever experienced a moment in your life a miracle or whatever where time stops you know what this feels like and so that was my experience time had stopped for me and so um i remember thinking to myself that's it i, I must have died and everything was okay everything was okay i felt I, I felt something i had never felt before i felt peace and uh, I believe it was Melissa Etheridge who said the same thing when she was going through her chemo, when her body had given up, when her muscles had given up, when her blood flow was just barely moving, uh, and she was laying in the bed and basically had no understanding of her body anymore. She just felt pure love. For, for all the people that were in the room, she just felt pure love, and she knew that everything was going to be okay. That was my experience. There are 7.8 billion people on this earth. Okay, your wake up or your experience of waking up or your experience of being jolted up or whatever happens to be can be will be completely different than everyone else's. You can tell your story and that's exactly what you should be doing. Tell your story, but then stand on the fact that that is your story. It is not my story and it, my story is not going to be your story. But that's the first stage. The first state is when you wake up and when you start to wake up and when that reality cracks and when knowledge and the information that you've been given doesn't answer the questions that you have anymore that's when you go on your journey now the interesting thing is the next phase that you go into this phase lasts a very very long time and so can the awakening phase many people will get frustrated they'll get they'll feel like they're in the dark i know for me personally i started studying the illuminati i started studying the elite i started studying the uh rings the pedophile rings and all that kind of stuff and and i just i finally just sat there and was like well that's it you know they basically rule everything and, and it's game over uh, it took me a lot to get through these things and to get to the place where I believe Jesus walked, which is that forgive them for they know not what they do. Um, they, whoever they happen to be, whether it's the elite or anything like that, 
I don't believe that they're doing it out of evil. I think they're doing it out of necessity. I think that in this world, you pick your family and you pick your friends, and those are the people that you're willing to kill for. And if eight point something million people below you are not your family and your friends, you're willing to make the sacrifice. And I don't see that as evil as much as I see that as deluded. I see that as love because it means that you loved your family or you loved your friends enough to cross those lines. Um, and I think that Netflix has done an amazing job of explaining that. You know, you watch all of these Netflix documentaries where you start off at the very, very beginning and you hear their story and you go, ah, that's why they did that. That's why the cartel grew into what they did. That's why, uh, you know, the Knights Templar or any of that kind of stuff did what they actually did. Um, I still stand on the fact that I believe that everything starts out of love. And if you can't find the love, then you don't understand why they did what they did. Nonetheless, that's my personal belief. But the next phase that you get into is going to be waking people up. Because see, by yourself, you are everything that you want to be. You can be enlightened. You can be kind. You can be compassionate. You can be uh, caring. You can think all of these things about yourself. But until you actually have somebody to be kind to, to be compassionate to, to look in a mirror and reflect and say, oh, okay, get in a relationship with somebody and find out whether or not you really truly believe the things that you're reading and the things that you say that you do believe. That's where people come in. People are here. Everybody in your life is here for you to find a new area in the sand to draw a line and say, okay, this is the new me. And now you get to act it out. Okay, knowledge will always keep flowing and you'll find new things that bring you up and new things that inspire you. But it's all up here. It's all a concept until you actually do it in the real world, until you actually leave your house. And I went through that. I was enlightened. I was on fire. I was studying my nine vibes. I was doing all these different things. And then I realized I was in my room by myself. I was the guy in the cave who wasn't really doing anything. And so I went out into the world and I got a job. I became a dog trainer. And suddenly I noticed that it's a lot harder to talk about enlightenment and actually walk in enlightenment. You get frustrated with people. You get frustrated with customers. You get frustrated with uh, all the situations in the world. And so it is much, much easier for you to talk about being enlightened. It's much easier to post about being enlightened than it is to actually walk it. And I've, I am no saint. I make mistakes all the time. Uh, my girlfriend and I will have a conversation. I'll get a little bit snappy and then I'll be like, ah, sorry, that was me. That's, you know, everybody goes through that. All right. But the next phase that you go through is the one where you actually bring what you know, your awakeness to the world. And you think that you have the answers. And so you start talking about them and you start sharing them and you even start kind of going to the ones that led you down the other path. You start talking to Christians about these different things. You start talking to people in your family who really played a role into why you are or why you followed the path that you followed. You, you rebel, basically, but you do it out of love and you say things like namaste, my brother, and you know, you are my friend and I love you and all these different things. But there's a difference again, between talking about it and actually doing it. And so you go from person to person and you try to shine your really awesome and amazingly great light into their eyes and you blind them and you do it every single time because the thing that you'll finally learn after you go through this and you go through this and you try to heal people and you try to force your will onto them because you know what is best, you come to a place where you realize no one woke you up. The universe did. God did. The source did. The energy did. Whatever it is that you want to call it, that's what actually got to you. Nobody grabbed you, shined a light, and was like, this is the way that it is, and you must do it. And so you, you understand that. You understand that it's the letting go that actually is the thing. And more importantly, it's not the talking about being these things. It's the living it. If you actually wake up every single day and you live your life the way that you talk about wanting to live your life, people will see it because you'll become a light. You don't have to go and shine your light. You become the light. And one of the messages that you can pick up or, or um, that explains this is Jesus. Because everybody thinks that Jesus just laid his hands and was like, you're healed, you're healed, you know, very Oprah, you get a healing, you get a healing. But that's not actually the truth. Jesus only healed people 
that came to him. You, you had to have that connection in the first place to say, and that's why he talked to the guy at the well and he said, do you even want to get better? Like, I'm not even going to bother with this. Do you want to get better? And the moment he said he did, now Jesus can work within that time. Now Jesus can work within that space. He could have. I mean, think about it. If you think about the power of these people that have walked before, they could have healed and changed everything, but they didn't. Because it's not your right to put your will of rightness onto someone else's journey. And I'm not talking about Taoism. Okay, that's a little bit different. And, and again, another sector that you can get into, which is really awesome. I love the flow. Uh, I love the messages that come with it, but that's not what I'm talking about. What I'm actually talking about is living your life so that you become a ripple that gets sent out in energy. It doesn't have to be forced. It, it's something that will come from within you and will go out into the world. And when you get to this phase, when you get to the end of the second phase, when you stop trying to save people and you stop trying to force your will and you stop trying to change things, externally and you start realizing that you can change them internally is where the next phase comes in and the third phase is when you realize there are no others the whole time you were trying to wake these people up and save these people and help these people you finally come to a place where you realize that there are no separations and so if you were awakened in your walk and where you were and in your darkness so too will other people and the other thing that comes into this, and this is the hardest part, I think, of the third phase, is that this is the moment that you actually get tested at the greatest level of your faith. It doesn't matter what path you walk. It doesn't matter how you got to the top of the mountain. The view will always be the same from the top, depending, of course, on what you believe. But the thing that really does matter is that when you get to that, that third phase, you let go of all fear. You have to. You have to let go of death, and you have to let go of sickness, and you have to let go of darkness, and you have to let go of fear. And when you let go of fear, when you truly let go of fear, is the moment that you actually realize it was always about you. If you changed 100% from here to the tips of your toes, you are exactly the light that you read about in the stories. You are exactly the walk of the masters that you want to actually walk like and be like because it was never about other people see they're the illusion okay this is the dichotomy this is the the final part is that if you're kind to somebody that you that you meet for the first time or that you bring into your life if you're kind to them even though you know that they're an illusion that repels and comes back and tells you 100 percent you are a kind person so in this infinite state of perfection that everyone talks about, this heaven, this Garden of Eden, whatever it is that you want to call it, if everything was as perfect as it was, what would be the one thing that would make you want to actually leave that state? See, I think the answer is love. I think the answer is the one thing that would make you want to leave a state where you could have anything and everything, all the ice cream, all the knowledge, everything that you could ever want, but the one thing you can't do is ask yourself, Am I a loving person? Am I loving? You don't even have to say person. Am I loving? And unless you have something to compare your love to, for you to share your love with, you'll never know if you're a loving person. And that's what I think God asked himself. And that's what I think we are. So first you wake up because you realize who you are and you start down that journey and it's amazing. And then you start waking up others because you think that that's the way that it needs to go. And then you realize that there are no others. There was always just you. And if you would just focus on that, if you would focus all your energy on yourself. Now, there is a difference between focusing all your energy on yourself despite other people. There is a difference, as I've said, between standing on the building and saying, I am God, I can fly, because you will fall every single time. But if you stand on that roof and you say, you are God, and you can fly, now you're uniting. Now you're not separating yourself any longer. And now you are understanding that core message that there are no others. There is one love and one energy. And it's you and it's me and it's all of us in this collective consciousness. I hope that answered your question. Thanks for watching.